Good evening or morning or night, everyone. Welcome back to the Sunshine 80% Tournament. Uh, I'm Average Trey, and with me, who is this? I am Kat Senna. Hello, Kat Senna. Uh, today's race, we have Fetch versus Oatflaker. What do you think of this race, Kat Senna? I think it should be very fun and laid back. It's the very first Group D race. Back in Oatflaker, this will be their first event here. Mm -hmm. I think that mostly they're just going to be, you know, sizing each other up, seeing what they've got for the rest of this, the rest of this tournament. They're going to test totally. out their strats, test out their mindset, and yeah, we'll sit back here. We'll give you the rundown. The timer's about to start here in just a little bit. Oh yeah, they are off in just a second. We got Fetch playing on NTSCJ, O'Flicker on NTSCU. That'll give Fetch about a 10 second advantage overall, but not much. Dynamic there. We did yeah, see so, uh, in the tournament some PAL versus NTSCJ competition. Yeah, we did. I think Oat is the only person in this tournament using NTSCU. <laughs> <laughs> he and JJ are the only two people I'm aware of to get to accomplish a 115 on NTSCU. That's true. What uh, what was JJ's NTSCU 115 time? I don't remember, but I do remember it being close. Do you think it was it better or worse than Oatflaker? It might have been slightly better. Okay. Oatflaker so, and Feck, both very new to the 115 camp. That's true. There's been a lot of recent 115s that are brand new. It's pretty crazy. Sure has. It seems like every single day, people like SB and Reed Oat, Flaker, and Paper Ario are getting on insane runs for their skill level. They're really pushing it right now. They're capable of a lot. Yeah, Paper got it, like, super recently. That's been long overdue for him. He just prefers 120, like any good man should, you know. Yes. Great category. Hello, Quinny is a Paper and guy in the chat. <laughs> very, very good with managing his time. Choosing his battles. Oat Flaker heading down the airstrip here, hoping to keep it clean. Oh, yeah. Looking good so far. Looking fairly routine for both of them. And yeah, like, like as far as Fetch goes, I remember back in the day, actually not too long ago, like, Fetch was just like a purely IL based speedrunner who saw like a 117 in this category. But in recent months, he took major strides to improve his RTA times and got a 115, so solid stuff to him. He sure did, and it did come as quite of a surprise because there was a there was a point in time where he took a little bit of a break from Sunshine for perhaps a month or two. He yeah. came back. As soon as he came back, he was hitting the leaderboards, you know, taking it mm -hmm. one or two seconds at a time, had a lot of very small PBs, did work his way up to a 115. Oh, Flaker, similar story here. Yeah, Oat, uh, just really fast and improving player, you know, just always super solid. Known for his bingo skills, but he also showing up in any percent as well. He sure is. One thing I think will be very interesting to see during this race is, as far as we know, I don't think Feck has been playing the game very much as of very recently. The last yeah, not a whole lot recently. Yes, I think this race will be a big test for him Whoa, in seeing uh, what he had. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too loud. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> uh, so airstrip movement coming up. <laughs> Neither player clubbing at all, really, you know. Like I think I did earlier. Oh, I got like yeah. a, I got like a 327 airship earlier. That was fun. <laughs> Always good. Always good, especially going against Reed, the biggest airstrip player on the map. Reed, dude, going against Reed's early game is the scariest thing because you know he's gonna body you. You just gotta pray that he'll make some mistake and you catch up. <laughs> Luckily, things went well for you earlier today. Yeah, I wasn't too happy with my gameplay for the most part, but you know, I did good enough, I'd say. Still logged to 117. Yeah. Very I'll decent take that. time. As long as I get below 118s, you know, can't complain too much. 
I think you guys should keep your eyes on the right side of the screen for much of this race. Oat Flaker recently been on quite of a roll in Sunshine. Scored his first 115 sorry, a while back. Mm -hmm. Has been on really good pace quite a few times since then. In the mid game, into late game. Very talented player, a lot of momentum. Yeah, if I were to guess, I would say that Oflaker is the favorite in this race, even though Fetch has the slightly better PB. Just given circumstances. Yes, the momentum definitely should play a role here. Fact, I feel like a very uh, fast player. I have a feeling like Fetch might get like a strong start out the gate, and then oh, it will just remain consistent for the most part, and slowly catch up. Maybe that's my guess for like the trend of this race. That definitely would make sense, but if you remember that very first run after Fex little break he had earlier this year, nearly mm -hmm. PB. It was on PB pace into Corona, just couldn't make the fast. Oh, man. Unfortunately, you never know when it comes to these guys. They're able to whip out some crazy stuff just completely out of the blue sometimes. I mean, that's SMS any percent in a nutshell, like a random amazing run can come out of nowhere. Yeah. It's not crazy. You'll go on like really cold streaks where like no good runs seem to be coming along for like weeks. And I don't know where you're like a week where you're playing amazing and you're like, man, I got to capitalize on this in PB. Definitely. Hopefully. <laughs> Both of these runners definitely hoping for good performances here in Group D. We saw just how tight competition could get during those Group B matches with first through third place only being about 13 points apart. All three of oh, those yeah. players with two wins and one loss. Very, very competitive field here in this tournament. I have probably the most important question to ask that we have in the chat. Is it pronounced feck or fetch? Oh. <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> it is a you mystery. You say feck? Yeah, I say feck. We may never know the true pronunciation, though. Yeah, it's still up for debate. I've been saying fetch as of late, out of respect, but I used to say fetch. <laughs> I have definitely noticed the slight movement towards fetch in the community. I've been more of a more of a fetch me recently. Yeah, and now me, perhaps it'll change on my end soon. <laughs> Chat looks to be at a bit of a consensus, though. They they do like the fact the fetch pronunciation they certainly do but you know small sample size can't really be too sure about that but here we are at gameplay here we are scumbag from both of them yeah look pretty clean fact with the swag dive this fight should go fairly typical for both players a mishap here would be very surprising Getting three shots in with no problem. Feck. One of the IL kings of this game. A very low sum of vest. Very risky player. We'll have to balance yeah, that out in the race here. He's one of the uh, de facto uh, little kid players, you could say. He sure Known is. for the so amazing long. sum of best. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, it's sum of best. Really uh, technical movement. Very, yeah. Very skilled player. They're going to head towards Shadow Mario here. Perhaps go for the quick kill. Ooh. Both of them getting it. Simul quick kill. That was nuts. That was nuts. Very impressive from both of these players. Fact, Pretty tight window on that. The rest of this race. But can they both get the early M? Oh, Feck going Ooh. for the, the task strat there. <laughs> <laughs> Does that ever work? I don't know. I think it, it in looks pretty tough. very rare circumstances. Feck going crazy here in the early going. Gotta save every frame you can, man. Every oh, yeah. frame possible. Not holding back for anything. Feck doesn't even spray before his hover slide. He's going all in. <laughs> Yeah, so spray hover sliding, for those who don't know. I guess it's like a frame or two slower, but it makes them like way more consistent. So it's just better overall to do them. 
does make them more consistent. But Feck taking lessons from Cathalon here, going straight to the hover. Oh, yeah, unfortunately, hurt. Fetch getting a worse spider there. Gonna cost him. Yeah. Oat with the 902 entry. Impressive. A little bit of a delay. Yeah, honestly, 902 is really good for NTSCU. You lose like two seconds after this point so far, I think. Yes, because <laughs> At of least. those Shadow Mario text boxes. A little bit longer here on NTSCU. Yeah. Just a loading time or two. Will be an interesting challenge for Oatflaker, matching up with Feck, being on a version that unfortunately loses a bit of time. He will have an advantage on two shines, though, as many of you are aware. He will be able to complete the Serena Six Shine a little bit faster because of more leniency. And then also on EYG, he gets fruit storage, which helps out a little bit. Makes it easier for him. It's like these players are having a. Fairly routine boss fight here. Going for backflip strats. Shoutouts to the Theodore manipul manipulation right there. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the earliest tricks discovered in this game. Any trick found before 2010 is like literally like Stone Age <laughs> of this game. Stone Age. Oat Flicker with a different shine grab than Feck. He simply jumps into the shine, which I've seen a lot more people start to do recently. Feck, though, going for the fast ground pound. So, first secret stage. Uh, should be pretty routine. Don't think either. Actually, Fetch might go for the hardcore movement in the secret. I'm not sure. He might. Back Pretty with sure another. Oat does not. Yeah, Oat tends to keep things more consistent. He's more of a, consist of a consistency player, while Feck, as we said earlier, more of a risky guy. We'll see what they do here. Mm -hmm. We did see his risky pal, Luigi, go surprise us all by going for the more typical normal strat here. He's going normal. Yeah. Both of them. See, I think that Fetch, you know, when he really got into the RTA part of it, he learned how to control himself when he has, when he has to, you know, not take the risk every time. Yeah, not taking, not taking too many huge risks. You know, the the fast early M he attempted later, earlier in the on in the run, that doesn't have much of a trade off. It's either it works right. or no early M. It's just a fraction of a second lost. You may as well go for those risks where, like, there's, you're not going to die because of it or anything. <laughs> yes, whereas that Bianco 3 strat, if it's messed up, at, at best it's a missed cycle. At worst, it could end up in, a, in an unfortunate early death. Both of these players are unlocking Rico En route to Bianco 4, a movement intensive shine. That Feck, we're expecting great things out of him there. And Oat get the travel skip. He should be good. He gets it. So does Fetch. <laughs> I guess I'm Team Fetch, you're Team Feck. That's how I will say the name. So this is probably one of the more movement-intensive levels in the whole run. Decent momentum spin by Oat Flaker. Angle could have been a little better, but he's happy with it. Some crazy movement here, lots of spins, lots of jumps. Oat Flaker, decent bit of speed off of that momentum spin. Yeah, give them some spins all around. Let's see what they do here on the slope to the right of them. Ooh, oh, gets the... Very nice remote. Back playing it safe. Oh, Flicker with a very Ooh. impressive momentum spin there, though. This is really uh, interesting. Fetch being the safer player here. Yes. <laughs> Surprising us here in the early going. Oat Flicker off to an early lead. Taking risks here. Playing very impressively. 
Oh, Leica is styling on him right now. But that could all fall to shambles by one certain PD Piranha. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> he really can. He has a lot. PD has a lot of options in this level. It's always fun. Forty-four patterns. It's always fun when you work so hard to get that amazing early game just for PD to ruin it. <laughs> yes, and RNG a very big factor in the early game, especially here. Big fetch catching up. Both had a bit of a slip up there on that movement. A surprising here. place to gain a bit of a lead. Unlocking PD at neck and neck. Oh, getting the one up. This could be anybody's game out of this level here. RNG, by definition, unpredictable most of the time. If you could see the Matrix, you can manipulate it, but unfortunately, yeah. none of us are Neo, so what'll be happening here? Similar, exactly the same start for both players. Yes. Could be a good first spot because, of course, this uh, could lead into the best possible pattern, but you could also take a number of less fortunate routes through this map. This is the closest race of all time. It sure is. He's Although, oh, it's <laughs> over the wall. Yeah, oh, and over the wall, unfortunately. Neither of these players is getting the, the best possible route out of that first position. In fact, with the shorter path there, he'll be able to get his second hit faster than Oat will. Ooh, yeah, Oat got the bad over the wall, too. That's, a, that's unfortunate for him. There actually are, like, pretty fast over the wall patterns if he goes, like, not to this place. <laughs> so. Unfortunate that it wasn't one of those. Yeah, honestly, Fetch's pattern, uh, not too shabby. Looking out over Oat. Yeah, looks like Feck might come out of here with with the early lead going into Gelato here. Pretty decent time by Feck there. Nice RNG. Oat Flaker had the, had the better strats, had the better movement for a while there, but RNG here to, uh, to shake things up here in the early going. That's just the rule of races. If you have a better Bianco 4 time, you have to get the worst PD. Got to keep it balanced. Keeping it balanced. A lot but, like the the typically bad Pianta 6s a lot of players get after getting Rommel. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, both players with a... If you have at least, like, a 16-4x out of there, that's you're looking pretty good. Looking pretty good for a race. Check with another swag dive. Both players taking a more traditional movement under the umbrella towards Gelato. Not going between the benches, which saves a little bit of time if done well. It is risky, though. We did see Ouija take a bonk there earlier in the tournament. Oh, yeah. It's surprisingly annoying to get through there sometimes. My chair is very loud. I apologize. I like reading what Flood says here on Outscreen. screen. I haven't seen in CSCU since I was like, well, <laughs> I guess since <laughs> early 2015 is the last time I used it. I haven't while. seen many of these messages recently either. It's interesting knowing that the Japanese players can understand everything being said on their on their screen all the time. I'm about to learn Japanese just so I can read the text in this game. <laughs> I'm actually really curious. I'm super curious what the man in Serena 6 says in JP, because he says, like, so many more text boxes. <laughs> like, what are you saying? Like, in English, you're just like, no, oh, go clean it. <laughs> but it's like, you're saying a lot here. But anyway, GBS coming up. Perhaps the JP players wonder the same thing about Shadow Mario and Delfino. Oh, yeah. Back with an advanced strat there. Woo! Again. Oh, Both doing this new movement, uh, which I highly recommend. It's pretty pretty fast. Getting very popular this year after Mikan, also known as Orange, a Japanese player who would have let everybody know about it on Twitter. One by one, these players adopting the new strategy. 
I was this close to learning backflip, but Orange came in clutch, found that setup, and never looked back. Saving a lot of people from the inevitable lost runs caused by backflip. Quick right. kill. In fact, with the fairly decent gelato here, no big mistakes for on his side. Did have a bit of a slow water slide there during the last shine, but fairly inconsequential. Oh, Flaker also with the quick kill. So it's avoiding that supposed green guy RNG. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, he's out of the way, but every now and then, he'll come up behind your back. Won't even see him coming. Fetch is going through the Shine Gate, only a little bit slower than from the back movement. And they're both doing the back okay. movement from Reed earlier today. Both of them doing the slightly slower strat. But only slightly. Yeah, it's not as slow as you would think, though, because it's like you don't even let you for that, so. No biggie. Not a huge deal. Perhaps the RNG here on this shine, Pianta 1, will play a bit more of a factor. Ooh, oh, getting a terrible first chocolate. That's going to cost oh. a little bit. Ooh, Fetch is moving. Fetch lighting it up here in Piano 1. That's going to save him lots of time over out. Yeah, great execution coming up behind the chocolate fast strategy there. He had momentum going into that chocolate. And oh, getting bad luck. Unlucky. Yeah, Old Flaker definitely not being dealt a good card here by RNG so far during this run. Still, a lot more random numbers left to go here. And of course, a lot more execution. <laughs> that could play a role too. And a couple more auto scrollers, this being the first one. Counter 2 is an auto scroller. Gives the players a bit of a chance to breathe, though. Gives them a chance to show off, perhaps, as well. Reaching the flagpole does not cause El Piantissimo to go faster in this game, so the players are free to do whatever they want so long as they beat Piantissimo to the flag. Oh, exactly at six seconds for Feck. <laughs> yeah, Feck, you can even talk to a Pianta and, you know, just take your time and just still beat him. Yes, Piantissimo is still running while the text boxes are up. 2025, that's a year that'll happen in that'll our happen. lifetime. Be a crazy year. Exciting to see how things in SMS will shape out by then. I think Good Able still have the record. <laughs> <laughs> At this 20, rate. 2015 was a good year. 2015 was a good year. We had somebody else roll that in a race earlier during this tournament. That was calf's that was a calf year. Oh yeah, that's your calf right there. More static. Year of the USA. Well. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen Feck go safe where he has the option to on a couple shines earlier Don in this race. We'll see how he goes here. Looks like he's going risky. Ooh. Nails the GWKD. That small edge grab, the only mistake other than that. And a bit of a talking issue, but still good. <laughs> He's playing surprisingly airtight for not having played recently. Yeah, Fetch is looking really strong right now. Hopefully he can keep it up. Both players with very good execution, of course. Oh, like are doing a bit of a different Pianta 3 strat. That's the Samu strat, it looks like. Oh, yeah. I started messing with that. I wasn't a fan of it so far, but maybe I gotta, I gotta mess with it some more. Perhaps Oat Flaker clearly has converted, at least for use in during this tournament here. Shout out to Samu for that setup. He's been experimenting with a lot of different strats lately. Woke up one day, decided he wanted to do some very, very crazy strats. 
He's been innovating in quite a few areas of the game since then. In fact, with good RNG here. Honestly, if you can find like any small thing in any percent at this point, it's pretty insane because this category is just so optimized. And this category has been pushed to its limit by a number of people. Of course, the optimization movement was most famously spearheaded by Nindede. Oat Flicker with some good RNG as well has a bit of a trip up on the chain though. And Oat is going fast. I gotta point that out because Paper wants me to. Uh, you have going to fast. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they both got comparable luck there. Both getting 24s out of Piazza 4. That's what you want to see. These two races, <laughs> I mean, these two racers have been having a, a great performance so far. Not a lot of mistakes at all. They've sort of just been white riding their wave. Old Flaker been dealt an unfavorable hand by RNG, but he's holding it together over there. They're just sort of sitting back, pressing the buttons. But if we're following the script at all, uh, you know, Fetch should not get Ramel here, and it will, right? He didn't get. Uh, he didn't. He didn't get the best <gasps> movement there on the okay. end. Of the yeah, that, <laughs> that was, was scary on Feck. Feck's part. Sketchiest Yoshi skip ever, but he gets it. Took a couple hits from the Yoshi goop there, and then has to twist his camera around and face forward for the clip. Not often you see that. Feck not going for the risky throw there. Yeah, you can mash A B and make that throw from all the way over there, but it's a little risky. If your mashing isn't good enough. Yeah, no room for Feck. It's time for Oat to get it. Come on, Oat. We've had quite a high Ramel ratio so far in this GSA Any% percent tournament. We saw Ouija get early cycled twice in a row during the Group B preliminaries earlier. Reed earlier today with an early cycle as well. Feck does not have similar luck, though. I yeah, okay. Oat. Yeah, Oat having better luck here, uh, despite not getting early cycle, he's moving. Oh, he he's moving. moving. And a wrap bounce to finish it off. <laughs> Very low stoppage on outside. Yeah. Really decent luck for non-early cycles on both players' parts. Yeah, that was an easy sub-150 split for Oat. Neither of these players got Ramel, so they should expect a fairly decent ride here in Pianta 6. Shouldn't expect too much to go wrong here. I mean, have Mr. Pianta 6 himself, you know, no pressure. The to king. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Although Syrup still barely on top. But uh, yeah, having a 219 and all, you should definitely go down the history books for that. Back been known for a very long time for his prowess on the aisle boards of many shines, including this one. Bit of a slip up there, unlocking the fourth Pianta. Yeah, that one's RNG when that lady is not cooperating. <laughs> Fortunately, spam spray RNG does play a role here during this shine. Doesn't all end after Pianta 5. Mushroom rollout. Gets it? Okay. Should still be like a 213, I think. Yes, interesting strats from Feck there. 213. Yeah, T13. <laughs> you know, misses an unlock, still gets a T13. That's just fetch things, you know. Feck, very good. Lots of technical skill on this stage. Saves four seconds on world record with that performance. Uh, oh, missing those unlocks. It's going to cost a bit of time. And then, unfortunately, for Oat Flaker. But both players getting above a 210, meaning they don't have to dis be disqualified, right? No forfeit here. No forfeiting allowed here at GSA. They're both playing out of their minds right now. I gotta they say. They really are. <laughs> About to say, forfeiting isn't even close to <laughs> the into the equation here for a variety of these players. These players are playing phenomenally well. We're about Great to see time. a sub sub 29 Piazza without early cycle from Fett. Oh, if he gets Shadow Mario. 
Bit of a delay there on Shadow Mario. Not too Gonna bad. Be close. <laughs> <laughs> I think he still has it though. Yeah. Cutting it close, but he has it. Early Cycleless 28. That is amazing for a race. That is great. Impressed. Very, very impressed with these two players right now. Oat Flaker definitely making the best of what he's been dealt with here. Great time for him as well here out of Pianta. Back in ahead for early cycle. No, or not early cycle, sorry. Honey skip. Let's see how fast he sets this up. Okay, he found the right shadow position. All right. That was pretty Let's fast. Pretty decent setup. Now it's O'Flaker's turn. Oh, he is. Oh, okay. <laughs> Found his hover nozzle. All right. A bit of hesitation there from O'Flaker. Both of them make it into the make it into the cutscene zone. There, it looks like. There we go. And off to pin one. We've been seeing a lot of. Players have trouble on pin 01 during this tournament. Pin 01 can be just a nightmare if none of your regrabs are working, none of your shots are hitting. It happens. Stuff can go awry very easily on this shine. Lots of very sketchy technical things here with these rockets in pin 01. Sometimes it's just unpredictable. Things go out of your hands. In fact, of course, hoping for a fairly straightforward shine here. First shot looks good. Nice DM shot. Gets the second, third one. Can he get this grab from here? Ah, uh, not quite. Gonna have to do Sid shot. <laughs> or just play it safe, I guess. <laughs> and he gets it. A little safe. No. Oh, did he miss one earlier? Oh. You huh. might have missed one. That's interesting. I didn't even see that. Me neither. Surprising from Feck there. Suboptimal pin 01, unfortunately, has to take an extra curve or two there. Loses precious time. Still ahead of Oat Flaker. I forgot to mention another rule of SMS any percent. If you have a good time on a Pianta, uh, <laughs> Mike has got to be bad. <laughs> that I don't make the rules. That's just... established rule. Them's the rules, folks. Not much you could do about those Oat Flaker, though. Pretty good time out of Pianta. And a pretty optimal Pinot one as well. Yeah, we're making up at least 15 seconds there. Probably closer to 20, actually. Very nice performance by Oat Flaker there on Pinot one. Players will head towards fairly, a fairly straightforward secret level. Not much can go wrong here. Mole skip, fairly easy. A side flip dive into the loading zone. Shout outs to V Man's mom for finding Mole skip. And yeah, the secret, pretty straightforward. Uh, you cannot beat a certain cycle, not even the task can, so don't even try. Pinna Park, a very tough stage. I've heard it be compared to SSL and Super Mario 64. Just a lot that can go wrong. A lot of very tight windows for very technical moves here. Pinna 2, though, one of the only shines along with Pinna 7 that doesn't quite fit that description. Yeah, aside from Pinna 2, every level in Pinna, well, aside from Pinna 2 and Shadow Mario, I guess Pinna 7 is pretty easy too. Uh, every other level can be like a huge run killer, potentially. Pinna 3, of course, one of those. We've seen a couple players so far during this tourney take the metaphorical fall of death from the top of this stage that could lose up to 25, 30 seconds if backed up poorly. And that's like one of the most tilting things you can do is fall down the water here. So you'd hate to see it if it happened. In fact, though, very skilled with this level. Did the Y turn. Gets the front ship cycle, no problem. No baby movement from him, though. 
Not a lot of momentum on that spin jump. He should still make this cycle fine, though. Oh! Get momentum spin. Oh, it tried something crazy. Oh, oh but it didn't work out. He should have done baby strat and gone to the ledge. Oh, Feck also having difficulties flies off the Yo. off the ramp there. He's able to save it with his hover nozzle. <laughs> oh, it did like some hoverless movement thing. I don't even know what that was. Wow. Yeah, both uh, of these players are experiencing heavy difficulties here on pin of three. Interesting backups for both players. Yes, that was very interesting to watch on the right side of the screen there. Oat Flaker with the big bingo brain. But that was crazy because Oat. I don't know if you saw, he like literally did a dive cancel off of the mast of the ship. <laughs> wow. I don't know how he didn't bonk, but that, that looked pretty cool. Player surprising us here every single day. Sunshine, very technical game, a lot of depth to the movement. And yes, there is a newer, there's a newer task right for Pinna 3, but... It's uh, it's a bit scary in races unless you're Sam Rayman. <laughs> He's mastered that movement now. That strat conceptualized by our very own Feck eight seven six three. Oh yeah, not doing his own strat. What the heck? Feck with a number of strats named after him here. He misses the one cycle, unfortunately. There. Oh, it's gonna cost ten seconds. Oh, it might be like nearly here. catching up here. If he gets this, did he? Oh, no. Oh. These last two that... shines haven't gone as planned for either of these players here. Yeah, pin apart, you were doing like all the hard movement. It can just be... It can kill so many runs. Because like, pin apart one cycle isn't too bad if you're doing a safer setup, but they're both going for a pretty ballsy setup that saves two seconds, so... Very it all depends on missed. Yeah, it all depends on how fast you hit the first turtle in your setup. Back with a comfortable lead here. Of course, a lot can go wrong in the next shine coming up here. EYG. This shine definitely has the potential to shake things up just before the midway point of this run. See what RNG effect gets here. Very good RNG there with Banana. Has a little bit of trouble getting it out of the ground. Those players navigating to episode three successfully. In fact, not able to launch the papaya towards where he needs it either. Yeah, hopefully it's the bad papaya placement, but the stew's gotta cooperate. Old Flaker will utilize the NTSCU and PAL exclusive trick, fruit storage, to aid him here. Back with yeah, the here's where Oat should save some time because of that. Almost neck and neck now. Wow. Crazy. That was due to two things. One, Oat Flaker's version difference there had a little bit of an advantage, and two, Fack had some minor difficulties there in launching the papaya towards where he needed it. Both players on the grow. same starburst at the same time. That's this crazy race getting crazier here. Over See the top to the middle. To the middle for Oat. To the right no for problem. Fett. Okay, yeah, Fetch playing it safer once again. You know, if you would have, like, taken their game feeds and swapped them, I wouldn't have even, like, doubted it. <laughs> oh, yes. This is very surprising from Feck so far, just the strats he's decided to do and not to do. Playing it a little safer than we expected. Yeah, and Fetch containing going... himself for this race. He is. Unfortunately, he that uh, is going to lead to him seeding the lead to Oat Flaker here. A very small lead, but we'll see where Oat Flaker can take it. Last race, of course, was Lead Change City here in the GSA <laughs> channel. Reed and Trey jockeying for position for much of the first two thirds of that race, up until an unfortunate Serena 2 sort of hindered Reed from catching up again. 
You hate to see it happen. This is a very, very good first Group D race. These players must be very confident looking forward right now. I am afraid to race these people if it comes down to it at some point. <laughs> I'll say that much. Kwanisa and Samurai Man must be on high alert right now watching these two players just effortlessly play Low like 39s out of very Pena. skilled people. This is like just barely out of 115 pace. Still low 116 pace. <laughs> Insane. Two of the top runners in this game. Oh, in fact, takes a bit of a bonk there. It's Dude, not I gonna swear. Help them. Pit oh, Rika movement is like hard <laughs> sometimes. It's very hard, but when it goes right, it certainly does look great. Mm -hmm. Old Flaker with the nicely conserved spin input. Yeah, I think both players made like a comparable amount of mistakes on the way to Rika. Oh. What's crazy is that these guys are so close to each other and they're going into Rico, a stage that is heavily, heavily dependent on movement, on execution, pressing the right buttons at the right time. This is setting up to be perhaps a very interesting stage. It's going to be like all mental through this Rico because like you really shouldn't lose much time in Rico, but just like knowing how close it is, you know, one of these racers might freak out, slip up somewhere, Rico 4 perhaps. Pretty tough secret at times. Rico 4 and 5 could be tricky at points. These players, man. I could only imagine they must be eyeing this the, the stream every shine or so just to see where their opponent is at because it seems like every other shine, it's, it's different who's in the lead. I think Oats Internet having a, a bit of a trouble here. Old Flaker yeah. having Trey Syndrome. Yeah, hope so I did order I learned about these things called like Ethernet power line adapters. Which might be the the look like both of these players uh their streams are having difficulties playing. I think that the actual stream is down. Like the of us. Are we good? Okay, good. <laughs> I was worried for a second. We apologize for the technical difficulties. I show us Cheese. He's a good restreamer. Good restreamer, talented runner as well. These players heading through blooper list right now. Good to be back. Oh, fetch with a low 18. Solid. Very solid outing from him. Looks like Oak Flaker. A little bit behind, but definitely not anything to be ashamed. Like dead even. Uh, the streams are not perfectly synced right now. Bit of a sinking issue here, but yeah. Just gotta Definitely check the timers. Still a close race here. Yeah, very close, either way, <laughs> no doubt. I'm on the edge of my seat for <laughs> Rico Harbor of all things. Rico Harbor. Rico 3 here. Shouldn't cause too much of a problem for either of these players. Of course, Feck. What? <laughs> 
In more oh my goodness! Oh, <laughs> cutting it she close there with the yellow sub. Really close to that sub. That was scary. If you die there, that is probably the biggest mistake you can make in this whole run. Barring like soft locking an EYG, which would be really bad. Oh, that, that, that would be really bad. Thankfully, it hasn't happened thus far in this tourney. Players have had. Pretty pretty clean EYGs. It looks like uh, looks like Feck here heading towards the water here for the the six red coins. We're back online, thankfully. We're back. Thank you to those uh, viewers who've stuck around through the turbulence here. Twitch has been crazy tonight. I don't know what's going on. This race has been crazy tonight. Yeah, Oats on like still you know keeping that low one sixteen pace up. Fetch with a really right solid run of Seth in that, that Rico 4 death and that fall in Rico 5. He has been holding it together. Aside from those two unfortunate mistakes, a very impressive outing from Feck so far. It would it would, I mean, if he would end up losing this race based off of those mistakes, it wouldn't even end up being his fault. It's just that his opponent here is on a roll right now in Sunshine. Yeah, not giving him any chances to catch up. Yet. <laughs> you never Hopefully. never give up. Even Hopefully if you're in fetch. Had a bit of a cough. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, never, if, even if you're in Fetch's shoes, you know, you gotta never give up because, you know, any random thing can happen. You can die at the end of a secret anywhere. Just keep playing your heart out. He's gonna give it all he's got here. There's still so much left in this game to go. A lot of risky secrets, a lot of hard movement, a lot of, a little bit of RNG here and there. I mean, Both especially secrets. because even if Fetch knows you can't win, He's got to keep it up to get as many points as he can, because you get more points based on how close you are to the person you who beat you. Yes, as we saw with Group B, every point could play a role in how these point standings end out. First through third, separated by just 13 points. And I've just gotten some confirmation that uh, Dede's record has been beaten. Dede's record got beaten. What? <laughs> Interesting news from chat here. We'll uh, <laughs> to either confirm or don't reverse. think that's true, but you know, it's worth it's worth a peek. I feel like if that was true, we would have no chatters right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not buying it. Old Flaker. Really clean Bianco 6 for him. We've seen a lot of runners have trouble with that shine recently. Feck heading, hoping for the same result here. Yep, stream's uh, not perfectly synced. Fetch is a little closer than it appears, but still got a ways to go. Oh, not doing the quick kill, but still a very fast kill. Safe strat is pretty good for getting a, a fairly quick kill consistently there, even though the quick kill is one of the more easy ones in the game. Ooh, Fek, a bit of a slip up. He's going to have to wait for the, the cycle here. Banana throw? Oh, nails the banana throw. Oh my god. No fear. Some very good Bianco to Serena movement from Oat Flaker. I might take note of that, like the, the cameraless banana throw. Gotta have faith of where it goes. Oat Flaker knows his angles. Here in Sunshine. Yeah. Feck perhaps gonna go for the quick kill here. Playing it very liberal with these water slides here this run. He hasn't missed one. He's, he's doing pretty well on that account. And now that Bianco is over, he won't have to worry about it for perhaps the rest of the run. I wonder what Manta setup he does. Oh, old school Milko hit. We saw a lot of, we saw, we saw Reed having a lot of trouble. And me. The last match. <laughs> oh, and and Trey apparently. But to be new. fair, it wasn't the setup's fault. It was my fault. I didn't spram it up at first, so that's what <laughs> messed it up. It's still a good setup, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Promise Looks you. Like perhaps a good setup, just a little tiny. It's it's a harder to do properly setup. Old Flaker with a fairly good first phase there. We'll be spraying down these purple guys here. We'll see how the RNG leaves these two guys in comparison to one another. Of course, we still have... Oh, Vec taking a bonk there on the movement to Manta. Still have a... Uh... The players are a bit out of sync. Fortunately, we've been having our... some technical difficulties tonight. I think Twitch was doing its Trey's internet impression. <laughs> Maybe Jeff Bezos needs a new Ethernet cable. <laughs> Even I he can't afford one. Can. Like can't can't blame myself too much. Yeah, he can. Back with the old school setup here, hoping for 
as nice of an as nice of a manta as he can get here. Old Flaker, of course, holding it down. Had a pretty decent manta here. Few mistakes. Oh my God! Wow, that's that gonna presence. that's gonna save him time for sure. Jesus. Yeah. Let me tell you, that's one of the better things that could have happened here with this run Oat Flakers on. That was actually like a nuts Manta from Fetch. Let's see how he's able to close this one out. You gotta be kidding me. Wow, very fast Manta from Fetch. So, <laughs> Fetch just saved like almost 20 seconds there, I think. Wow. That was Oof. crazy. Feck looked like he might have been running out of options there. Might have needed Oatflaker to make a few mistakes, but there he goes. About 20 seconds just like that on Manta. Uh, actually, I don't know about 20. Oats might have been decent enough to make him more like 15, but yeah, still a lot. Definitely still a good showing from the fact there. Oatflaker heading to Serena 2. We saw Serena 2 cause a lot of trouble earlier in the day. Reed, of course, with multiple deaths here, more or less decided the outcome of that match, the Group C match. That's the thing about this game is that, you know, certain deaths could be like way more costly than others. So hopefully he does not miss this. And he's good, okay. He's good. That momentum spin is relatively easy. It's only hard because of the stakes behind it. it does have quite a lot of stakes behind it, as we saw earlier today. Reed losing a lot of time on that first death he had there. Not all deaths are created equal. Beck, unfortunately, had one of the worst possible ones. We could for oh, he oh messing up the entry. A bit. Looks like oh, oh, almost had a clean backup there. Yeah, Switched that would have been a sick backup. Wall. Oh man, now the phase through the platform. Okay. No! Oh, wow. Oh, okay. a lot Luckily, going on lands on the balcony. He would have fallen all the way back down again. Oh my god. <laughs> that would have sucked. A few falls there. Luckily, he didn't have one more. That would have been perhaps the most costly out of all of them. He makes it in. Oh, Flaker gonna haul this. Oh, oh that the crazy clip falls. The into notorious the clip. That is the Serena Two clip you do not want to see. Wow, that is so one of the That's worst why feeling things in late game. You want to try to not land between that watermelon and the other block because that might happen. For those who don't know, that's uh. Or not watermelon, the black and the, the gray thing. <laughs> <laughs> the bricks. The yeah. bricks, yeah. That is something that can happen, those of you, those viewers out there who are not regular Sunshine viewers. Yeah, so before you lose a run to that and highlight it like, brand new clip? Uh, no, <laughs> that can, that can, that's the thing. <laughs> Don't let it happen to you. Still is very interesting and very new unfortunate clip to discovered. see. discovered. <laughs> I guess, like, how, I've seen it like probably 10 times throughout my Sunshine career. It's like, yo, new Serena 2 clip. What just happened? <laughs> anyway, uh, we see Casino skip from Red Flaker. You really can't one. blame him. Yep. There's just so much to this game. You can't tell what's new, what's not, what's just an old strat that's been redeveloped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not like. Like hazing them or anything, like they wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm just saying it's kind of it's kind of humorous for my part. Just saying, don't do that again. <laughs> you do it once, and you learn to never do it again. <laughs> Old Flaker with a fairly decent secret so far. He's gonna go for a risky momentum spin. Nails it. Ah, uh, he attempted GWK but missed it. Yeah, he went for a hamstrat there. You got that time. That is an interesting strat because it is about a 0.5 second time save that loses like 5 seconds if you miss it. <laughs> That's pretty much every new strat in this game in a nutshell. <laughs> it's like, you can do this really risky thing to save 0.5, but if you miss it, your your run's over, almost. Back to taking some risks here, perhaps seeing his situation in relation to Oatflaker here. Seeing how well he's done here, perhaps concluding to himself, perhaps I should go risky here. Fortunately, paying the price for it there. Oh, Flaker gonna face Mother RNG. 
here in the basement of the casino. Nah, no, this, this is Father Orangey, the mother's beauty. <laughs> oh, Father I am Orangey. Out. I wonder what, uh, I wonder what the Ramel guy is, the, the last person. <laughs> That's the, their third cousin. <laughs> Oats Flaker dealing with the matriarch of RNG world here. Good hand it's... so far. Yeah, you want to see fruit, something, fruit, something, fruit, ideally. Zach doesn't get a lot of momentum from that butt slide there, has to correct himself. Doesn't lose a, a lot of time. Impressive momentum spin. Still getting a sub one here, so you know, decent race pace overall, but just Oat Flaker's on a monster run for a race right now. Oat Flaker is performing phenomenally. He would love to keep this ball rolling for the rest of the tournament here. Uh, the rest of this race, obviously, anything can happen. It's not in the bag for him yet. Perfect King Boo so far? Yeah, it's looking pretty good for him. Coming up on his last cycle here, he will cancel this cycle and hope for nothing but fruit here. Ooh, oh, extra cycle. Extra. Yeah, one is the most common, probably. Yeah, that's all he gets. Okay. One is good. not too bad. He will he leaves like he will seven seconds for that. Yes, of course. He'll definitely take that here, especially given the race situation. He's sitting comfortable on a good lead here, going into Serena 6, Serena 7, and then Noki. Yeah, he is on, like, very comfortable 116 pace still. Quite a few really good 116 showing so far in this tournament. Oh, Fak, unfortunately, starting out this King Boo with an early cycle, not what he wanted to see. He's going to have to cross his fingers and hope for... Nothing but fruit from here on out. The matchup with Oat Flaker. Ooh, misses the pepper. Oh, he's fundling a little bit. Had a uh, fake grab there. Missed the pepper. Unfortunately, had an, an extra cycle there. He's seen he's seen better first uh, first cycles here in King Boo. And yeah, notice how Oat only had two text boxes to go through and. He has a much more lenient beach to clean on its ESCU. Yes, oh, definitely with the advantage here in Serena 6. Given the version he's using, takes a bit of a backflip. That wasn't intended, but should be able to hold it down here with these lenient NTSCU rules. It's honestly disgusting <laughs> how much you can miss. <laughs> it is. Although, not the time he's quite looking for on this version. You want to aim for more like closer to 228, 229 range, I feel like. For comparison, during a Group B match against Equivocal Genius, Ouija was able to score a 222 on JP in this shine. So Oat Flaker definitely not with an optimal showing here in Serena 6, but he will, uh, he will save time on Feck with that. And how many extras of Feck had? Like two extra? Out there, he's had he's not had a favorable King Boo so far. I know he had the one early on, but did he have how many more after that? Not sure, but I think we were both watching out like his three yeah. six. It was too mesmerizing. It's not often you see in NTSCU Serena Six. A lot of the PAL players have been sleeping <laughs> recently. Samurai Man, of course, been staying active. Oat Flaker, pretty good kill on Shadow Mario here. Yeah, not on the wood, but before the stairs. You gotta feel it for fact. He's he's had deaths, you know, his one death aside. He's had two deaths, unfortunately, because of the, the clip in Serena 2. He's had quite a good showing here. He's held us together for the vast majority of this run. Pretty above average race here. It's just that his competitor right now, Oat Flaker, He's been going crazy in Sunshine the last few weeks, and he's been going crazy so far during this race. Not a lot been going wrong on the right side of the screen so far. 
Maybe playing a lot of bingo is the key to being good at 8%. He has been playing a lot of bingo, working out his brain, mentally preparing himself. He's working the, the other side of his brain, I guess. Yeah, the creative side. Here in Sunshine, we'll see. Going for some safe strats here on the wall kicks. Yeah, he knows he can play pretty safe and be okay. He just wants to maximize the amount of points he gets now. He's sitting back. He's comfortable. Probably just trying to avoid mistakes. He doesn't have to play it risky. Sort of hope hope effect trips up a little bit more. Secure some. Fetch with a 220 right there. That's really solid for JP. Yeah, only three seconds, uh, not counting the text boxes, of course, on Oat Flaker. Impressive Serena 6 from him. Oat Flaker gets Snoky 1 done. Not any major incident. That's what he wants to see for the rest of this run. He wants to see just getting these shines done, not tripping up too bad, keeping Feck behind him. Because he knows that Feck needs Oat. Feck needs him to make a mistake for him to come out on top at the end of this one. Oh, Flaker will be heading to Noki 2 here as Feck. Oh, Ooh, Feck with an amazing quick, quick kill. kill. Impressive stuff from Feck there. That one's actually really hard, in my opinion. He wasn't staying on the shine. Okay. <laughs> you got it. During Indide's 11440, he did attempt to go for that strat, but missed it. This goes to show you that it is challenging. Feck there that pulls it off. That run also proved that Bianca 6 is the hardest secret. <laughs> Hugging the pedestal before he grabs the shine. I'm oh, sorry, did I say feck? I meant fetch. <laughs> that one slip out. I'm trying to rep the fetch squad still. Feck fetch. Oh, did look to be having a pretty solid Noki one until that unfortunately slipped up on some goop. But still a clean second cycle, I think. Yeah. Yeah, clean second cycle. Shouldn't be losing too much on O here, but that's honestly not very important to him. What he's hoping for here is Oatflaker making a mistake. And I mean, eel eating him could almost be enough, I think. Yes, Eel, Noki, uh, Eel and uh, Noki 6 here. And Corona. Feck perhaps will be watching this stream here, seeing what goes on on Oat's side of things. Because if there's two shines here that can flip this around without much prior warning, it's those two. But as for right now, Noki 3, Oat Flaker just sailing through the water, collecting these coins as his routine. Yeah, Oat Flaker's line's looking kind of weak, but, uh, you know... <laughs> I won't judge him too hard. Playing with his eyes closed here. He just needs the the experience to know the, the lines. Optimize your Noki 3. Yeah, Noki 3, you know, in the game, uh, in the lore of the game, it's meant to be like a, a Noki 4 practice level, essentially. And we'll see how much it helps him on the zeal coming up. Allows the players to get a grip on some water mechanics that are only seen in those two levels in any percent. Ely Mouth's Dentist, as is clearly legible on the bottom part of the screen there. Oh, I forgot, like, reading that text. You're supposed to go up to Grandpa first and then go down there, but nope. Bye, Grandpa. Old Flaker using his hover nozzle, giving him... Launching him straight into the loading zone. Doesn't need to visit any grandpas here. He does need to clean some teeth. We'll see if he uses air damage to his advantage here. Air damage. Rather than hurting players as we saw happen to Ouija two times in a row earlier on in the tournament. Can actually go to aid players in on NTSCU getting this cutscene skip here. I'm not sure if uh, air damage is even viable if you go for six juice, but I wouldn't really know. Maybe it is. Perhaps. We'll definitely 
see here what. Oh, I think he missed a pixel of plaque. He's not gonna be able to get six Ooh. tooth. Just Pulls a pixel a of plaque. There. Just a pixel. Yeah. You hate when that happens. He's gonna take. He's gonna have to take. A tiny extra cycle here. A few seconds. Yeah, I'm backing up with five tooth. It's around Cost seven like... or eight. Yeah. Uh, but he should be good. Yeah, get six to two damage, and he gets it. Very good, eel from oh, five tooth. Unfortunately, but definitely not enough for effect to catch up here. Yeah, honestly, as long as the eel's not eating him, he's fine. But may have lost uh, another point from that. It's been a pretty good, laid back, low stakes race here. Only the first match in Group D. These players just sort of getting a feel for what they have for the rest of the tournament, seeing what they need to practice on, seeing what they're doing well, seeing what they're not doing too well. Both of these players doing almost everything well. In fact, with just two freak deaths in this tournament and a mishap on Rico 5, sending him behind Oathflaker, these two runners have been very strong. And who was it? Quan and Samurai Man in Group D as well? Yes. And yeah, they've, they've been taking notes as well, I can yeah. tell. They have quite the challenge here, even though Feck behind in this race, he definitely looks like he has a shot at scoring the second place. Of course, it's very early, but just off of how well he's been playing, it looks like he does have a shot to get out of this group stage by the time things are said and done here. I think that like low-key Group D is the toughest group to be in. We've had, yeah, I mean, Group B, as we saw, was very challenging, but <laughs> Group D is loaded Just as well. A bunch of consistent players in this group. And then, of course, right, Fetch, back. who's amazing. <laughs> he is amazing. <laughs> Let's see how that translates here. And Eel has a bit of a trip up trying to hover that, that plaque off the tooth, getting knocked around by the hitboxes. Playing pinball in Ely Mouth right now. Another five tooth from Feck here. Feck might have had some difficulty also triggering his, his uh, mouth to close there. A little turbulent, but... Uh, he's not quite oh, where the tooth is. He's no. not in the zone for cutscene skip. No. no. I knew right. he didn't hover enough or something. Uh, what is happening? Okay. <laughs> okay, he backs it up, but... That was weird. Yeah, around two extra cycles, I'd say there. So, seven... Or eight seconds times two, perhaps. That's like four part. tooth equivalent. Yeah. Going back to 2014. Wow. Again, now what Feck wanted to see here, not not a devastating mishap, but just Oat Flaker playing so well that those little things are just making his chances of victory look smaller and smaller. And he's going for ham cycle. So let's see if he can do it. See if he can secure this green cycle. Good Bit of so frame far. droppage, but I can tell what's going on. <gasps> okay, a slow one. He can't go for the corner cut, but still pretty good. No platform skip, unfortunately, but still pretty good green cycle. As far oh, it gets a bit of a okay, so there. <laughs> he like got like a ground pound cancel, but then he ledge grabbed. Almost optimal. Oh, All right, not bad, not bad. Definitely that was probably like. He probably did like half a second of a really blue cycle there. Worf. Worf. Fetch getting boxing gloved. Alright, for Oat, what he needs to do here, make sure Shadow Mario does not go up the cliff, and make sure he gets a safe, clean Corona. Should be fairly simple. I think... Oh. Yeah, he may go for regular Corona. No need to risk it. Gets the quick kill. Yeah, Oat really just never made any major mistakes this whole race. Yeah, he's had minor mishaps on, of course, Pinna 4 and Pinna 3, but you know, some other minor slip-ups here and there, but he's been playing just so solid recently. I'd be terrified if I were Quan or Samu. 
Yeah, they're perhaps even got practice codes loaded up right now. <laughs> <laughs> These players just showing just relentless skill here. Forces to be reckoned with in Group D, perhaps elsewhere in this tournament. Pretty likely that one of these two moves on past the group stage here. So I can't really... Oh, Fetch falling down oh. the ropes. Fetch falling down the ropes as O'Flicker goes for fast Corona here. Woo, he's doing it. A choppy fast Corona because of the <laughs> frame rate. Okay, frames are back. He's still on pace for it. Dude, that is a crazy fast. Just like the, 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 the <laughs> spikes were barely even up yet. What? <laughs> that was crazy from Oak Flicker. Wait, wait. Can I get an instant replay on that? What the heck? Yeah, that was crazy. Oh, Feck trips up a little bit, but... Wait a minute. Are there new fast Corona strats that are faster? Or am I, am I tripping? I have heard um, of the Nashi and Samurai Man and perhaps some other players experimenting just a little bit with a nuttier fast Corona. Oh, that might have been what that was. We, I, I was unprepared for that. I was just crazy. Oh, Fat couldn't it real close there on the corner. Yeah, the white turn working out though. He makes it to the end. Fortunately, Oat Flaker. He's just got to get around this around this hot tub here. On pace for like a one sixteen twenty something or other. Easy 116. <laughs> Out, literally never let up. Never, never once. He's just... I'm I'm very impressed. Playing very well. Oh, gotta respect the, the quick, quick Shadow Mario attempt from Fetch, but not quite. <laughs> Only Reed can do that, apparently. And that's Reed it, 116, 25 from Oat Flaker. 25, an insane performance from Oat Flaker on NTSCU. Very, very good. <laughs> first yeah, because I know the version difference. Oh my god. <laughs> that's like 116, 15 equivalent, roughly. Yeah, Oat Flaker just driving this Oof. one home, not giving Feck any sort of a chance there. Feck played a very good race. Just. Didn't stand a chance He's because a mad of how man. tight Oak Flager's performance was. Yeah, we were right that the, the momentum is carrying him right now. Still looking strong. Momentum did have the dominant effect here during this race. Oak Flager secures the mid-116. Back going to go for fast Corona here, make up as much time as he can. Of course, and Fetch wants to salvage these points here. Yes, it is early on in the group stage, but there's only two more chances. Oh, oh unfortunately, he's going to try to get the ledge But here. he's safe, he's safe. He does save it. Not going to get fast Corona, but save himself from disaster. That was regular Corona equivalent, right? Yeah, it looks it looked okay, like good. it. So that worked out. That wasn't too much time. All right, Fex just got a boss fight and some rocket storage ahead of him. But as I was saying, early on in the group stage, but these guys only have two more chances to uh, sort of prove themselves here. So Fex definitely keeping the points in mind. He's got two very hard opponents. So for every 10 seconds that Oat beats Fetch by... Oh, Kekona, by the way. <laughs> For every 10 seconds that Fetch is behind Oat, he loses a point. So I guess at least some quick maths when he finishes as to how many points he gets. The Oat's guaranteed at least 60 for winning out of the 90. Yes, and then the rest of them will be split depending on how many intervals of 10 seconds Oat has on Fetch. Moving on to the third platform here, looking fairly routine so far. Surprised there was a 118 from Feck here because his, I mean, a lot of his run was just really good. Yeah, his time does not reflect how well he was playing today, sure. Two costly deaths, unfortunately. 
relegate him to a 118-48 there. A bit of a late split. But GG's, though. A very, very good performance, nonetheless, from both of these players. GG to both of them. We'll see if we can get any interviews from these very talented players. Very good match here. I was entertained. Yeah, like the first half especially was extremely close. Welcome, Oat Flaker. Hello. Yo, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, grass on the win. What were your thoughts on it? Thank you. Uh, well, I played pretty well. I didn't die. And that's what matters. And uh, yeah, I'm happy that I pulled out a good time. Were you nervous at all and how close it was early on? I was really nervous the entire run. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous for like three hours before the run started. But yeah. So fact, you definitely showed up though. In fact, you showed a lot of performance during this race. What's your mindset going into the next couple group matches you have here to make sure that you're able to shine through? I think I should probably actually play the game more beforehand. That definitely <laughs> helps. <laughs> helps a little bit. Yeah. Um, you gotta play more bingo, right? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play more bingo, man. That's a secret. That's what it is. That's what Tell it is. It's a secret ingredient. To yeah, see, I, I got my I got my first like job recently, so I've like haven't had time to play at all. Oh, oh man, good. I can relate to that. Good for you though. Someday. Yeah, I'm proud. Very good performance yeah, as, from both of you guys. As General Mike you. would say, a lot of potential from you. <laughs> <laughs> Max potential. Max potential. <laughs> But yeah, that will. Any more shout outs from either of you? Shout outs to Fetch. <laughs> Fetch. <laughs> not I have Fetch. We, we oh. finally confirmed it is Fetch, not Feck. There you go. Yes. It's shout outs to the Shineheads call for keeping me sane. That was cool. Yeah, oh, dude, that the is a. Guy. <laughs> That's a good mind game. Being in a call can like calm you down, actually. I was calling with Ouija the entire time, but my internet was dying, so I couldn't actually like talk or communicate with him at all. So it didn't help at all. Everyone's it's internet so was dying today. It was weird. Yeah, we had it so far. <laughs> Here. It's all right, though. It was a very entertaining race. Thank you, both of you guys for participating. Thank you, Trey, for commentating alongside me. Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. A lot of fun. Great way to spend a night here. Uh, but that's going to do it for this stream. I think Cheese is very tired, so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, first thing tomorrow at 2 p.m. EST, we have Oat Flicker again versus Samurai Man. So we'll see if he keeps yes. the momentum up, and let's we'll see if Sam can perform against them. Looking forward to see how Oat backs his performance up. Hopefully I got it. <laughs> Hopefully. Thank All you right. for uh, watching. Yeah, have a good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Uh,